We've got accuracy, we've got reliability, we've got validity. These are all different words that mean quite different things, but are, are used interchangeably when we talk about these kind of measurement systems. Yeah, I think it's important that we're, when we have a tool that we're using, first off, we know that the tool is accurate. So um, it needs to be telling us what we want to know. And there's lots of words, especially floating around in the science uh, for what we want. I really thought this was a nice graphical representation of what we were really looking for. So we could have, so for example, with wrist-based heart rate, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> is it is it accurate? No. No, okay, so it's not accurate. So where would the, is it even hitting this target? Yeah, well, I guess, you know, when we look at this graph, so we've got the target, and and then we have wanting to shoot the middle of the target. Then we have, inaccurate but precise and when we if we just start we're going to start with the whole wrist based heart rate there's like these certain times at which it seems to be right at where we want you know right in the middle of the target very precise very accurate and consistent and that seems to sit around zone one to two as you start getting above that not only do you start moving your arm a lot more, you start to sweat. There's a lot more wind flow, which can affect the light meters within the you know spectrometers. And then we start to get the imprecise and inaccurate. And for some people, like it can actually pick up cadence. And so then it becomes like, yeah, same again, um, just imprecise and inaccurate. But yeah, it's one of those things you got to take with a grain of salt, like wrist-based heart rate, and for anything, whereas when we go, if we're just talking about heart rate, then we go to the strap, heart rate strap, almost nowadays, like almost precise and accurate every time. These are electrodes that are directly measuring the electrical stimulus that your heart's producing, and so there's not a lot of room for error there. It can just be something where if you've got, you know, this new high-tech dry fit clothing, that can sometimes cause an electrical charge, which then uh, you know causes your heart rate monitor to pick up cadence. But for the most part, it'll settle back to what the main measurement is. Then when you start getting outside of that, it's there's a connectivity issue or a battery issue. It's not really with the measurement device itself. Um, and yeah, so like when we, <laughs> yeah, who knows where wrist-based heart rate sits on this graph and um yeah but what about power power meters matt yeah, like, i think power like is on a different part of this graph depending on where you're looking at it so if we're looking at power on an uphill it's precise and it's accurate like it's telling us what we need to know yeah right okay. but if we're looking at it on a downhill it's super accurate but it's not really telling us much because there is pretty much like zero power output yeah, right? we're, we're just kind of coasting. So zero, that's accurate, but that doesn't really mean anything to us. Whereas heart rate could still be elevated. So uh, if we're comparing that to heart rate, heart rate might be like really precise, but at other times it might be imprecise and inaccurate. Um, yeah. So we need to kind of take those measurements all with a grain of salt. And that's why they're really always complementary. Yeah, and I like, you know, if we look at the, the top right, of this graph you have precise and inaccurate and that really i think represents some power meters where it's precise but it's always wrong but then it's reliable because yes. it's always the same level of inaccuracy for that individual makes comparison between individuals not great but it does allow for like an accuracy or like a a precision <laughs> measurement um and that's where yeah i guess there's there's a lot of things you need to take into account you can't compare like for verse like if someone has a a quark spider chain ring and then another person has garmin vector pedals those are very different yeah that's right and we'll talk about that soon because that was something that was very near and dear to my heart dr matt and i started the performance advantage podcast 
help runners, riders and outdoor competitors integrate sports science more effectively into their training and racing. So over the last few years, Dr. Will and I have covered topics like the lactate threshold, training zones, power meters and fatigue. Now we're condensing these popular and misunderstood topics into practical courses. Our courses take our same podcasting style approach to learning and education and we break it down into bite-sized chunks that you can digest either all at once or as practical little resources to use as and when you need them. So the biggest difference between our course and any other course you might have taken is that we don't lecture you. It's a conversation between Will and I and we're explaining complex sports science principles in an easy to understand manner. Yeah, we also integrate like how we use them on the regular. Our courses come with a certificate of completion as well as a lot of takeaway resources such as training plans, scientific articles and quizzes that you can do to check your progress along the way. Our sports science courses are available now. Register on performanceadvantagepodcast.com for immediate access.